Welcome to Bonehead Weekly. We're so happy to be here. Yay. <laughs> yeah. No, this I'm is... kidding. This is great. I'm, I yeah, like it's... laurels particularly. You what? I like the laurels particularly. It's a line from Monty Python on the Holy Grail when they bring them a shrubbery. A shrubbery. I, I use it all the time and nobody ever catches it or knows what I'm talking well, about. Well, I introduced two people today with llamas with hats, and I was shocked of their age that they didn't know what that was. What? Yeah. Were they raised in houses that believed in Jesus? I don't know. I'll go back and ask. Ask. That may be why. Carl. I but that's I, I, I know my parents would have been, lo- loved me watching uh llama eat human hands, but sometimes mm-hmm. you get a rumbling in your tumbly that only human hands can feel. I, I agree. I'm not I'm not uh, arguing with you. But uh, your audio went down really low there, buddy. I th- oh, did it? Probably better. so. You did. Oh yeah, if you put it your mouth up to it, better there it now. works great. Oh, it, I, 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 that's I, too stop. I, stop, oh my stop, God. stop. We just lost viewers and listeners and both. So, gentlemen, this week we are talking about maniacal laughs. Now, this was a Chad topic. Yeah, I came up with it. We we uh, I came up with it as a topic for our uh, our small segments for a uh, Good Movie Monday with Glenn and, and Ben in with Australia. Glenn and, with Glenn and Ben, and I just realized we could do a whole episode on this. So, oh yeah, because laugh laughter is the best medicine, unless you have a disease. Cancer. Yeah. <laughs> In which case, don't don't rely on laughter. It ain't going to cure nothing. No, it may make you feel better temporarily, but uh, long term, take the radiation. Yeah, or whatever. I mean, listen to whatever your doctor, your doctor says. Yeah, yeah. I mean, unless James, unless... you you really need to give your headset a Viagra. <laughs> is it is it problematic for you, Chad? Is this better? Um, it's problematic to our listeners. <laughs> I mean, is it Mario really that bad? I'm sorry. I mean, I, I think it's problem. Better. I don't know. I would call it problematic to our listeners. Better I'm now. They have some sort of masochistic. Better thing. now. How about now? There you go. There you go. So, okay. is that better? We we did a short one of these. Now we're going to do a whole episode about who has the best maniacal laughs in film history. Yeah. No, it's not just films for me, guys. It's it. it no, I no, go across all. I cross. I go all over. You go, you go all over, do you? Oh yeah, go all the way. You a goa, you a goa. Oh, by the way, if you want this to, is, this is probably oh, the wrong. I, this is the wrong place to talk about this, probably. But Joe, I'm I, before we get into maniacal laughs, I got to tell you something, and then we can talk about this later. And when we do our year in review, if if this is my intervention, fuck you. No, it's just I really, really disagree with you about Spider Man across the Spider Verse. Okay. I really enjoyed it. I was I was going. What did Joe hate about this movie? Because it doesn't end. Yeah, this it, is a comic though. It's they never convoluted. End. Doesn't end. It's not convoluted. Oh, Nothing's convoluted. convoluted about it at all. I'm glad it's not convoluted for you. It's convoluted. For we could not be a people. dick. We could have a serious conversation. I am. I am having a serious conversation. No, you just keep going. No, no, it's convoluted. Oh my god, are we? Is it, are we doing oh the argument? Oh my god, sketch? somebody push the cut button. <laughs> are we doing yeah, the argument on you. sketch for Monty Python? Anyway, it's, just this is not an argument. It's, 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 it's over, over a pointless conversation. Just it is over two hours long. It doesn't it was, have an ending. Because it, it's tying it to another one. I know. And it didn't tell you that before you got there. And I wasn't the only one who walked out of the theater. I know there are several people who criticize that, but it didn't bother me at all. I, and I didn't. Yeah. I mean, and pe- some people like head cheese. I mean, it's not an awful movie. I like sequences in it, but I was just waiting for the damn thing to be done. And then it didn't end. Hmm. Two hours later, it was finally wound down for whatever shit was going on, and then it didn't end. That's my review. I, was, I, I honestly don't even remember the plot. I just remember them all the spider people. I like the place where I like the scenes where they're all in the in the spider, whatever the hell that is, headquarters. Yeah, well, I like that. Yeah, and the that plot is kinda, he's got to let if his father doesn't die, it's a core event. I don't even remember the thing about his dad. But if he doesn't, but he doesn't his want dad's his father a cop, to die. Right? Yes. Yeah. And I don't know if we should we should we talk about this because there might be people who hadn't seen it. Spoiler. Spoiler. But yeah, that's the something. Kid wants I to rewatch it. it. Was, was that weird twist that about? what ha- about the dad and i'm like i didn't see that coming i don't i just i really enjoyed it 
yeah, I don't even remember the plot. Uh, so it was okay. I just two hours later and it didn't end. I get it. It's a comic book, I suppose. I, I, but you like that Empire Strikes Back, you say? Yeah. No, but you know that Star is Wars a, isn't you know, convoluted old, at all. <laughs> as I got old, now you're being a dick because you. Just, no, I am not. <laughs> it's now you're just, it is completely convoluted. But yet, as, no, it, as, as he, no, it is convoluted. But uh, now you're just being a dick. But you know, no, Josh you just Whedon, it, me. Was, it was Josh. I didn't trash you. You didn't make the fucking movie. Josh Whedon. I talked about that about 10 years ago. We're not allowed to talk about Joss Whedon. And it wasn't until I actually listened to his criticism about it that I thought, yeah, he's probably accurate when it comes to Empire Strikes Back. It just ends on a damn cliffhanger. He's right. So does all the Lord of the Rings movies. <laughs> no, the third one doesn't. <laughs> but the counter argument to the Lord of the Rings one is that you know that there's a trilogy. Well, but... They I did mean, not. It, there was nothing. There was nothing as a casual moviegoer that told you that there wasn't going to wrap that up in some way because it literally doesn't wrap anything up. No, but at the same time, in this in this age, you know, there's always going to be sequels. So that's why I, I was like, no, I, I, I mean, yes, there's always sequels, but I had no idea, and I had no idea going into it as a casual moviegoer who hasn't read those has read those comics, and I don't even know if it's based on any kind of comic whatsoever that there was going to be absolutely no resolution. Okay. For the second one. Did you all know that there wasn't going to be any resolution? Maybe you did. I didn't know. But there's yeah, I just went in resolution. knowing that movies are sequels and that it but it was probably going to have a tie into the next one. So it didn't bother me at all. There can be a tie in, but there I mean there's literally no resolution. The movie just ends. Yeah, it didn't bother me because there's several movies that do that because they have such a large story that they can't tell it in one movie, so they cross it over across two, and then you know the other the movie doesn't end. The first so, one had an ending. Yeah, but at the same time, they didn't know how well that one was going to do. But now that they know that people are interested in this story, then they can do whatever the hell they want. Well, I was say, and and really, it is it is the same in some way as Lord of the Rings, in that good lord there's 400 billion followers well, i don't know character. i don't agree with that because i mean you get there was three books you know that there's going to for any i guess may, there may be 480 some... issues of miles morales spider-man <laughs> yeah. and also too the, the other thing is too when you look at every single superhero movie which we well james i don't know if, but me and joe are kind of superhero fatigued we're just done with it but if you do something new every, with it, bring it on. Every superhero movie has to end with the bad guy dying or the bad guy being defeated. Every single one. Even though there are multiple sequels going to be coming out and they're all connected to other movies, why does that have to happen? And uh, Spider-Man Beyond the, the multi said, no, we're not killing anybody. We're just going to let this story go. And that didn't bother me because I am tired of seeing the same the same formula on every superhero movie where, ooh, bad guy. Bad guy does a, does a thing that puts the, the superhero in a position. Then the superhero comes back at the end to prevail and kill the bad guy. It's the same which, fucking story. That's convoluted. Well, well actually, I'm glad you brought that up, though, because now the rumor is they're trying to bring back the original Avengers because people aren't. As don't give a about shit about any Avengers. of the other characters. And that's not that's Marvel's fault for not putting these characters. In a better light. So, yeah, I mean, there's tons of I really, you know, they could do something with the Hulk, but as uh who was it? I think it was um, Robert Downey Jr. at one point said, "Evidently, Universal doesn't want to print money." Well, yeah. the, the okay, I I would say that that's true. I wouldn't say that that's just true for that's true for um shit. What was it? melodrama? It's true for melodrama. I mean, the bad guy's got to get it in the end. So I don't know that I would quite take it. I, I would give comic book stories a little bit more credit than that because it's just melodrama. I mean, the kind of that's always what it's expected. The bad guy gets in an end or some sort of twist or whatever they come back or what have you. Well, yeah, but it's that's what that, I'm saying. People but I mean, there's to, people are, and, but that's what I'm saying. People are used to that and across the Spider Verse didn't do that. They're like, no, we're going to do something different. And then people were just going in expecting the same, same shit. And they didn't do that. And now people are mad. 
And that's what makes me happy. I don't know that I met that many people mad. I, I just remember me and the people in the role may have been. You mad. weren't the only one. There were several people who I know complained about it. And I went in and that's probably why I, I enjoyed it. Cause I went in with no expectation, but at the same time, I love the story. I love, I love the element about the family. The, I like the you know, first the, one. I don't know every, every the aspect one of brings story. anything back to it. I don't even remember the plot of the second one. But yeah, you call it convoluted. Yeah, it was convoluted because it's clearly went through my brain and out and I haven't paid any attention to it. But you have specifically, never mind, we'll get into this later. So yeah, let's get into our topic. <laughs> no, no, it's been great. Anybody want to <laughs> kill me with fire? <laughs> I didn't care for it. It's All fine right. that you didn't. It's fine that you so, didn't. It's just, I don't agree with you saying it's convoluted. Okay. That being said, maniacal laughs. Moving right along. Who wants to go first? You can go ahead. I mean, they're the bunch. I could literally name 15. So, yeah. well, wh which ones do you want to start with? Because, well, I, because, I will we start... have, because we have belabored the point of Spider Man, I'm going to bring up uh, William, uh, William Defoe as Green Goblin. Well, he... shit, you stole my second one. His I don't laugh. even know if I remember his laugh, guys. It's him laughing at himself in the mirror. He's he's the voice. Going, eh, 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 and well, his no, voice. No, no. really stretch. They even steal the laugh for the for the for the third Spider Man movie when they brought him back. It's the same. They even had it in the trailer. Yeah. The uh, yeah, I laugh. guess they did. I don't remember that one. Why don't I remember it? All I just remember is him making the face. I don't remember a laugh. Mm -hmm. Like I said, you even see the green when the when the pumpkin bomb comes down in the original trailer. That was the big clue in. Yeah, <laughs> I, I, no, I remember. I don't even show, I, I remember yeah, yeah. the trailer, but I don't remember the laugh. Yeah, it was my second one, James. That was going to be my second pick. Was Willem wow, Dafoe okay. was the green because, goblin because that laugh is so it keys up that, and that this is not an apples to apples comparison. But for comic book films, villains that have that maniacal laugh are always the big bad ones because they are, it, it's a sign to the audience that they find murder and mayhem funny. It's the same reason the Joker works. It's the same reason, whoever plays, doesn't matter. The, the maniacal laugh in a comic book film, if you hear it, that's pretty much an indicator it's a big bad, and it's a big bad that you're actually going to care about. You know what you didn't see in Doomsday and that Zack Snyder Doomsday? No laughter. So oddly, just a cave troll, just a cave troll, just a cave troll. Oddly enough, that's number one. The Green Goblin is number one on a couple of lists, being the first one, Movie Webs, oh, really? and a few others. I didn't man. look him up. I was just remembering yeah, the laugh. I, I was like, I, man, it, you hear was, it, and it gets in your head. I was curious that it's I there's several on a couple of these lists that I think it shouldn't beat out. I'm gonna it wasn't my number one, but it was definitely my number two. And, so I just, we had been talking about Spider Man, so I thought I'd throw that one out there. Hey, there, that's either. called a segue. I kinda wanna I'll look that up on your ride right on them. Yeah, because Willem Defoe and Willem Defoe wasn't even the first pick. It was John Malkovich, right? Yeah, and that's why he was gonna come back as the vulture, right? I I think Rank wanted him for the Vulture year for part four. Yeah, in part four because he didn't get to do. I don't know why he turned it down. I don't know the story behind it, yeah, but I'm almost positive Willem Dafoe was the second pick. Toby huh. McGuire was the first pick only by Sam Raimi. The studio wanted somebody else. Uh, so I will go next with okay. my, which one I actually think is probably think i picked this i don't remember if i picked this or you all picked this when we did the one for good movie monday but i think the best one of all time is brad duroff as chucky oh god jam joe i didn't even put that on my list you're right that was on our original one that we talked about it on the one for good movie monday yeah yeah i don't know that i and in another reason why i want to say it's okay first of all Truth be told, we do this this way. We pick three usually. We've been doing it a long time. Truth yeah. be told, I actually don't believe that there's anything that's the best. I actually don't believe that. But I do believe people should talk about things and discuss them and whatnot. So I don't know that anything is the best. 
but Brad Dourif is Chucky. I, I don't even know that if you've not seen a Chucky movie, you'll know that that's Chucky if you hear that laugh. What do you think? Right. Just like when we're talking <laughs> about certain, just like when we're talking about my kid knows that's Frankenstein, but he ain't never seen Frankenstein. Right. So he's never seen Child's Play, but he knows that's Chucky. Right. Yeah. I didn't teach him that. I didn't teach him that at all. If I did, I did it haphazardly or accidentally. I didn't teach him that. I probably Ghostbusters Afterlife. Don't you have problem. the action figure hanging on your wall in your basement? Yeah, but it's right up here and above. And he's, I don't, he never looks really. He asks okay. about other things, but he never asked about that. In fact, I have the Pink Panther uh, right in front of me. And he just asked about that today. And he's uh, six and a half years old. And as Joe, always, uh, Joe's son and dogs both can't look up. No, my kid can't look up, but um, I I don't. That one's pretty invasive across culture. And now yeah. that we have, geez, how many Chucky movies are there? I'm not sure. Seven or eight, six or and seven. Then you count the TV show. And now there's it's on season three. Yep. I never got to finish season two. I need to finish. I need to start watching it. I haven't watched any of it's it. It's okay. Yeah. Season one was okay. I just never. I have never got to finish watching. It. It's great. Not I'm, too convoluted. Uh, oh, oh those are convoluted. No, those are convoluted as hell. I had to go back one time because I didn't understand what the fuck was going on because it is convoluted as hell. It doesn't, and you go back and it switches time. Yeah, the show makes it even worse. Yes, it is convoluted as hell. But yeah, you enjoy it. Not yeah. enough to have finished it. <laughs> Touche. <laughs> oh, keep them coming, bud. No, oh, will, buddy. Um, my turn. Yeah, nah, I, I mean, let's move you, along. <laughs> we'll do it on James' pause. So, um, oh my god, in the I took in the, my pauses. That's all I had in the good movie. And you got that the hair. Movie, sorry. Um, in the good movie Monday segment, I mentioned Claude Rains uh, in the Invisible Man as having what is I consider one of my favorite maniacal laughs of all time. And that is still true. I still love that blood curdling, just maniacal laugh as he just brings chaos. But after we stopped recording, I actually thought of another amazing maniacal laugh that actually might supersede Claude Rains. And that is Dwight Fry's Renfield in the original Dracula. <laughs> <laughs> it's amazing. I mean, it's the one. It's the one that's most. That's the one that's most repeat. I mean, stolen. Yeah, it's it's replicated a lot, and yeah. it nothing. I don't think anything surpasses the original, in my opinion. I need to go back and watch Dracula. That I, every once in a while, I'll read something and somebody will go, "Well, you know, the 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 Mexican version's better." And blah, I don't really blah. care for the. I don't really care for Todd Browning's Dracula, to be honest with you guys. I, I think it ends on a on a on a lame note, and and the story is just Does Dracula boring. get killed. <laughs> yeah, in the most lamest way possible. And I know, I know, you got to go. It's 1930s. They don't, you know, it's different time. But I mean look at all the other universal films and they they were amazing uh in terms of the the, the endings and and dracula just just flops some but also too i just don't care for the story of dracula in in the original um but but dwight fry is the scene stealer everybody talks about bella lugosi being count dracula but i think dwight fry's renfield is like I think he overacts Bela Lugosi everywhere he can, and then that laugh just every time you hear that laugh, it just sends shivers up your spine. And well, it, it, I, go ahead. No, Bela Lugosi has screen presence. Everybody remembers it. I know, but I, I I know he has. Everybody says he has screen presence. I don't get it. The only time I ever saw Bela Lugosi have real screen presence was The Raven. Hmm. Now that was was amazing. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, but the the problem was, well, it's not a problem. It's just that, and I didn't learn this till I was I don't because I hadn't read Dracula. It was more of an interview with Orson Welles. He always wanted to do Dracula because his bitch was it that Dracula movies are always based on that shitty play. He would call it a shitty play or that one two act play. You know the two room play. Yeah, it's never really based on the book. Yeah. 
So yeah, that's my pick. I just want to talk about Dwight Fry's Renfield. I did not know he died young. He died like he was only forty three. From what? Uh, he died of a heart. He died of a heart condition because he was a Christian scientist and never got it looked at. Oh, he pulled a Jim Henson. Mm hmm. And a Val Kilmer. Hmm. Yeah. So Dwight Fry, guys, that's my pick. What do you got, James? You know, I'm going to go with uh, uh, another one. Um. That I don't think a lot of people, because not everybody's a big fan of this franchise. Some people are huge fans of this franchise. But I wanted to give uh, Hashtag Feminism a little bit of a shout out to women with maniacal laughs. And it doesn't matter whether you like the films or not. Helena Bonham Carter as Bella, uh, Bellatrix Lestrange in the Harry Potter films. Yeah. Her laugh. That's on lists. Is, oh, really? I mm -hmm. That I just remember the laugh because it is that it is that mocking. It's meant to scare, but it's also mocking. I've taken people that you love, and you will do nothing about it. Yeah, and I'm oddly be... enough, in some ways, he doesn't do anything to her. Eventually, someone does something to her, but it's not really him. Her mocking laugh that you know I've killed, and there's nothing you'll do to me, is oddly true. Um, and, and honestly, as someone that read the books, um, I don't think you could, there's, there's other characters you could cast where I would argue you could find someone better. She pretty much is Bellatrix Lestrange. Like that is, that was perfectly cast and that laughter is perfectly haunting. So, really? Yeah. Yeah. The, so that would be one that I wanted to bring up because it's not overplayed in the films too much. It is exactly what I would expect it to be. But it is such a haunting and and mocking, and it does what it needs to do. It's a maniacal laugh that says, I'm absolutely crazy, but also I'm going to mock you and I'm going to terrify you. And I'll be honest with you, James. I'm glad you did that. I feel a little ashamed, and I don't have any women on my list. That's because you're a misogynist and you're terrible. Hashtag feminism. Hashtag. And, they're not, and all of them are in convoluted movies. I don't, I don't doubt that shit. <laughs> um, but uh, no, man, being a convoluted, let's talk about them whore, whore, cro whore cross of scissors and then and, and God. Harry Potter. Shit, uh, if well, you wanted to I attack mean, me, you should have attacked me with convoluted at Lord of the Rings. You mean every character's got 10 goddamn names? <laughs> but that's but the problem, Harry uh, Lord of the Rings, so damn good. <laughs> I agree, and it's not hard for me to follow. But Lord of the, the uh, Harry Potter, it's like I, yeah. I, don't get me started on Harry Potter. Well, I'm I I, I need problem. to go back and rewatch them. I actually do probably you? should do that. I should probably read the books yeah. eventually. Read the books. Read yeah. the books and the movies. As I, I hate to say it this way. Read the books and the movies make more sense because they cut so much out of the books, especially the later books. Like realistically, and, and so I know what, they cut it out of the books and then put it in the movies. That's what you're saying, right there. No, no, flip it, Chad. They cut out so much of the books when they made the movie, and that's a problem. Is that they split the last movie uh, book into two movies? Arguably, they should have started doing that with about book six or book five. I mean, uh, not that I thought there needed to be more movies, but um, and there's 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 a there's a lot of issues with J.K. Rowling in general, um, but. Yeah, man. Um, well, I'm not going to go into that here, but I recommend you Google. Uh, but anyway, what's but that? I, do, I do think, but as far as as a character with a maniacal laugh, Helena Bonham Carter nails it. And and by the way, there's other movies where she has a great laugh, but there when she does it, it's a little strange. It's perfect, perfect. Yeah. All right. Is it my turn? Yes, sir. All right. So back to convoluted. This is the one we're going to talk about. Ho, 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 ha, ha, ha. Jabba the Hutt. All right, I got nothing. Yeah, I was going, no, I mean, that's, now, I, man, I just never thought of that as, it's maniacal. Yeah, I guess. I just never thought of it. It is, yeah, no, he's a villain. He's a big bad guy, and he has yeah. a laugh, and everybody remembers Jabba's laugh. Everybody, they, and they play off of it on the in 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 so many different ways throughout the other mini series, the series throughout it. By the he's way, still one, he's still else, one of my top three favorite Star Wars characters. Does anybody else wish Del Toro would have got to do it? Because speaking of yes. that, that would have been oh my god! Can you imagine how much more menacing he would have been if we would have got Del Toro's backstory? Yes, my Del only Toro's backstory. No, you mean job? Okay, got. It. Sorry, I got confused. Well, but Del Toro's 
Yeah, I got it. I'm sorry. I got, I got my brain. My only fear is that it would have been style over story. Right. And I love him. But my fear would have been because Star Wars needs kind of a story. It needs a plot. And I, style over story. It That's the reason some of them don't work. Hold on. Let me do this. <laughs> Talk about space. convoluted. Have you seen that Rise of the Skywalker or whatever that oh, shit's called? Oh, my God. Who are them damn chanting aliens? Never explain it. Never explain it. It's still my favorite meme that came out right after that movie came out. Where it's, I'm Ray, Ray Star Wars. I was like, that would have been just as good. Let that be the actual ending. That would have been just as good. I, I watched an interview. I can't think of his name. Uh, the guy that directed uh, the go um shoot. And directed Layer Cake, uh, Kick Ass. He's Matt Vaughn. Matt, Matt Vaughn. Vaughn. I couldn't think of Matthew Vaughn. Matthew Vaughn finally did. Uh, he doesn't do a lot of interviews, and I forgot what the name of that one is. Like crazy something something something. It's the three words. He's really popular. Del Toro did the show. A couple other people did it. And and Matthew Vaughn, he, I know he wanted to do Star Wars, and I knew he didn't get it, and I had no idea why. And now I know he just wanted to remake Star Wars. That yeah. was his pitch. Isn't that what they, I mean, I'm not being condescending. That I what don't that's disagree. What they did. I don't disagree, but he was like, his point was nobody gives a shit other than Skywalkers. <laughs> so why don't we just remake it in our own way for a new generation? I, I, okay. Part of me wants to see it, but most of me doesn't because I already have it. But then again, I'm 45 years old and that was made for me anyway. You know, that, yes. that, that's a great point that you bring up, though, because somebody pointed this out to me, and I'm like, God, they're not wrong. So the Star Wars movies that came out that we debate, the last, the, you know, whatever, the Rise of Skywalker, whatever. Right. Fifteen years from now, God, if you bad talk that, the kids will keep. The Maybe. The people that are kids now. And they point that I haven't out had anybody. I, I still haven't had anybody yelling at me over episode one. I, I have. I've started to see it online where people are like, well, you know, that's what I grew up with. That's what I love. How dare you question that? And I'm like, you know what? They're not wrong. If that was your Star Wars, if that's where you onboarded. I, I always tell people it, one of my favorite Star Trek episodes of all time from the original series is the Spire of Gothos. And that's on nobody's list. My favorite episode, because it's the first one I remember watching with my dad. Mm -hmm. And so it doesn't matter. You can say, oh, these episodes, are I don't care. Spire of Gothos is one of my all time favorite episodes. I understand now, and so I I, th I think that's it. So I I just wanted to bring that because uh, somebody did it was actually a cartoon and it was like you know when it first comes out and it's like diehard Star Wars fans like how dare they they've messed with the original blah 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 and it's like wait fifteen years and it was like oh you know and then it shows those diehard Star Wars fans the ones that are just coming of age how dare you question the rise of Skywalker and I'm like it's not wrong. It's not wrong. It's the same reason that a lot of people say, you know, the best Star Trek ever is Star Trek The Next Generation. When And I'm not knocking Star Trek The Next Generation, but when now a lot of people could point to episodes and say, that's a terrible episode. But there's people that get upset when you do that. And I'm like, I'm a big fan of all Star Trek, and there's a bunch of terrible episodes in a lot of different shows. Every single one of the series has a terrible episode. Yeah. Matter of fact, actually, uh, Star Trek Lower Decks just did an episode a couple weeks ago making fun of all the cave episodes mm -hmm. across all the series. And they're like, oh, and it literally has a line. Oh, my God, I guess we don't have money to go or we can't get to anywhere else. So let's just go to a cave because it's cheap true. to film, right? They don't say that in Lower Decks, of course, but that's why they did a lot of those. And it's like, uh, and, and they keep making fun of, oh, if we go over here, this will happen because, of course, it's a cave. And anyway, yeah. so yeah, but anyway, back to your point. Sorry. Okay, where where we leave off at? Who was going? Java, you're That's, doing Java. Java the Hut, yeah, yeah, Java the Hut, yeah. I I I mean, it's that it's memorable, it's iconic, and it's against uh, it's against a big. I mean, anywhere else a Jedi shows up, ain't nobody laughing, right? Yeah, he laughs. He laughs because a it doesn't work on him, but b it's so what is he afraid of? So it's yeah, you're you're absolutely actually uh, him and who's his friend who's his pet Salacious Crumb. Salacious Crumb has a great laugh too because he just mimics. <laughs> yep. He mimics whatever Jabba does. So when Jabba laughs, you get him laughing, and he does that head jerk up and down. So I agree. You're right. Yep. It's a good laugh. Who's next? That'd be me. So you know, back to your comment earlier 
about, you know, picking the best, what we think is the best. And I agree with you saying something's the best. There's always an argument. There's about, just, it just doesn't, it doesn't exist. It's like, there's not the it best. It doesn't novel, exist. It's not the best movie. It just doesn't exist. Right. But if there was one that people could maybe get around as being the best guys, I don't think anything beats Mark Hamill's Joker. That's good. Oh, I can't, I got a bit of a counter, but yeah. Just the fact that it go, it starts out as normal. And then the more he laughs, the more, maniacal it gets and it actually every time you hear it it instills fear in you even even though even even when it's a cartoon meant for kids you hear mark hamill's jokers laugh and it could make you leave the room it's it's just so chilling I don't um, have that and, reaction and but i love only, it i don't either but it I, can no, uh, re- but, cause that reaction but you're i'm not right. saying that you're right in because he did it for the video games and in the Arkham games where eventually Batman has to kill Joker for them. Again, it's been a decade if you haven't played it yet. But um, I missed it. I missed but it too. The the plot is, if I'm remembering correctly, I may be wrong, but basically Joker gets a hold of Venom. The stuff that beefs up Bane. Yeah. And he uses it. And they have the final showdown between the two of them. And Joker's laugh there, I mean, it is it is it is not filmed because the video is not filmed. It's programmed like a horror movie scene. Because you just hear the laughter and then it gets more and more messed up because of the venom. And then when it cuts to him all jacked up, beating down Batman or ready to beat down Batman, it is like a horror movie reveal. Well, and it's like a the Batman the animated movie, Mask of the Phantasm that came out. You know the final scene is the the fan phantasm the lady who who Batman's in love with the 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 Spoiler. yeah the 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 carnival or amusement park where Joker's hideout is is a set ablaze and it's crumbling apart and she refuses to leave because she wants to see Joker die and Joker's just sitting there and he's just laughing as as the crescendo of the of the of the music hits it is it 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 hits me in a way, guys, that I, I'm. It it's amazing what it does, and it's just his laugh because he's sitting there going, he's in on the joke. He's the only one who gets it. He's going to die, and he doesn't care. He thinks it's hysterical. Yeah, uh, yeah. So uh, J- Mark Hamill's Joker. I just in terms of in terms and when you talk about that, I know again you can't say it, it's the best, but man mark hamill's joker when everybody talks about the best joker it's always ledger or nicholson everybody forgets mark hamill just like with, no, with the hamill best batman the best, the best joker laugh yeah and well i think he's oh man his, his joker is just great anyway but well, then it's just same thing with the batman everybody talks about uh bale or or keaton nobody talks about kevin conroy either and that bugs the shit out of me when they do that oh kevin conroy definitely has the voice yeah he has the best batman voice and actually, oh, yeah. he did the best job of softening it for Bruce Wayne. Right. But. He's he, they don't, nobody did it until that point, though. He was the first one to do it. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's, so yeah. Um. But Mark Hamill's the Joker, I think, bar none. I okay. mean, is it me again? Yeah. I think so. The only one that I can say that I can counteract that with is is Vincent Price. Vincent Price for Thriller, but not just Thriller. Everybody goes Thriller. He was an Invisible Man, too, man. He had the laugh in Invisible Man. He has it in one of the best uses Not of the original, laugh. of course. Oh, no, he's in uh, Return of the Invisible Man? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Or Son. No, Return. It's he's Return. right. Your microphone, pull it up a little bit. There you go. Better? Yep. That better? Sure. Okay. Um, I'll, but Vincent Price, in a lot of films, does it. And actually, one of the most heartbreaking... He he can use his laugh to such good effect. I love the scene that I was I liked Vincent Price. The scene that made me actually go, "Good Lord, he's way too good at these films." Is his laugh is great in the pit and the pendulum, but actually he uses his laugh for great emotional appeal in Last Man on Earth. 
yeah. where he's watching home videos of his kids and he starts to laugh because of what his kids are doing and then he immediately breaks and starts crying. And and the only person to come close to doing that convincingly actually is Nicolas Cage and Mandy. Does a very similar trick at one point. But Vincent Price's laugh, and that, it's not him in, as one character. Any times he, he laughs, it's effective. It's and he talked. Uh, I saw an interview with him once where he talked about how he did Thriller, and it, I bur- this burned into my head because somebody said, "How do you laugh that way?" And it sounded that dark. And he said, "You exhale all the air you possibly can out of your lungs, and then laugh as hard as you can without stopping." Mm-hmm. And he says, "When you do that, it's almost like you're beginning to choke, and it makes your laugh so much more effective." And uh, but I mean, it's like I said, everybody knows his laugh from Thriller, even. My kids vaguely knew who Vincent Price was, but they knew Thriller, and they loved that laugh. And mm-hmm. so I would say he's about the only one that can can uh, that I would agree. Him and Mark Hamill are in uh, Rare Air, so that would be another one. I've got I've got a couple more that I'll honorable mention, but I'll stop talking now so we can move yeah. on. Joe, what you got? I'm going back and forth about which one I want to. They're both villains, and one of them's. But I'm gonna do. I gotta do Robert England's Freddy Krueger. Uh, I, and and it's been changed so it's different throughout the movies because his voice changed throughout the movies. Not only did yeah. his voice change naturally, his voice changed with age, but I they mean, changed it, it, his voice in the first movie. They, go ahead. I was gonna say in the first movie, that's really even barely his voice. They overmodulated that quite a bit, and it's weird because in the second movie they do that, in the third movie they don't do it a lot. Right. If you go back and watch the third movie, it's it's actually Robert England's voice a lot of times. So it's actually weird. But him still as Freddie and that laugh, I, I, it... I can't. I don't know if I can do I it. I can't do it either. I, I It's probably not... My honorable mention I'm going to do is probably a little bit more memorable. But Freddy Krueger, that laugh, there's a ton of laughs worth a ton, but I, I, I just wanted to mention it. Chad. Oh, you good? Okay. I mean, um, there's not much to say about it. Yeah. Most of mine, these people know these things are out there listening. So again, I'm going to um I'm going to animation for my final pick because when you talk of maniacal laughs, it may not be the best, but it's one of the most memorables. Uh you can't talk about maniacal laughs without talking about Skeletor. <laughs> <laughs> I wish I'd picked that one. <laughs> <laughs> I can't do it. Alan Oppenheimer. Uh, Alan Oppenheimer. Not right? related to the I think. Yeah, I think that's right, I'm Joe. Pretty sure it's Alan Oppenheimer. You got to interview him. No, I've never met him. Oh, I thought you got I thought he was at Comic Con. No, well, um, he may have been, but I've never met him. I'm I there's a lot of people been in a lot of these con- conventions that I've never got to meet. I can't still can't believe I didn't get to meet uh, Melinda Clark at Scarefest, but I didn't. Oh, that's depressing. I walked yeah. by and never got to meet her. I walked by too. That was all I needed. <laughs> no, I, I I wanted to talk. To her. Well, I would have liked to have talked to her. Don't get me wrong, but I got to, oh my God, she still is amazingly stunning. So, yeah. yeah. Heard um, me. But uh, yeah, Skeletor. Uh, now, if you're of a certain age, you know Skeletor laugh. Older, uh, younger groups probably don't know it, but I have it. I wish I had it as a, now I wish I had it as a text message tone because I just keep hearing it in my head uh, as I talk about it. It's just that he, he, every single plot that he has to take Castle Grayskull and get the power, he has to, to tell it and then follow it with his evil laugh. <laughs> it, <laughs> no, nobody can do it except the uh, Al- Alan Oppenheimer. I'm almost positive. James, look it up because I didn't look it yeah, up. It's, it's uh, yeah, it's Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um. He also it was that Star damn Trek nuke stuff. bomb. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, I you guys, I I wanted I I should have saved Mark Hamill for last instead of Skeletor, but I didn't. But in terms of of of, of, of people our age, Skel- and there's several different memes but- about it. But but you bring up an interesting point though because there were tons of villains in cartoons obviously when we were growing up in the eighties. Right. He was the only one that laughed a lot. No, Nobody there's else. One, was... There's one more. Okay, uh, well, uh, in my memory, immediate memory, there weren't a lot of there weren't a lot of villains having fun. 
no megatron didn't laugh um yeah, yeah no uh Co- cobra commander laughed a little bit but not too much skeletor was the only one who who just enjoyed being a bad guy yeah skeletor skeletor lived in the moment he knew to have fun when he could that's what skeletor yeah. taught Listen, me was he just embrace even, the moment he wasn't even that much of a bad guy you guys seen that he-man she-ra christmas special yeah skeletor yeah, ends up being the orphans. one saved today he and has a heart orphans. of gold that son of a bitch lied to me by the way, if you and the what James the one I was with, Doctor Claw, he had he had another. He was also, uh, yeah, uh, yeah. He he enjoyed the moment too. And that's what you got to learn. I'll that's get what you gadget. I have heard Chad do that voice for twenty two years. That's what more <laughs> villains need to do. They need to live in the moment, find joy when they can. That's why they mess up. They don't they don't find the joy. They need mm-hmm. to. Are you saying they need to stop and smell the the roses and dead bodies? No, they just need to find joy. You know, if you can't laugh at yourself. You know what I'm saying? You gotta. If you enjoy, if you enjoy what you do, yeah, it'll make you laugh every time. Which is why I don't enjoy the show. (laughs) Every day, get a little (laughs) bit closer to dry clicking that revolver. (laughs) Anyway, uh, well, you you're already dry clicking it. Yeah, I know. I know. I was just. I didn't want to go too far and get the censors on us. I'm just kidding. The censors don't watch this show. For help. All right. Are are we to honorable mentions? Honorable mentions, guys. Is that I'm, am I up? I'm ready to go whenever you're ready to go. All right. Uh, you know, you mentioned the Dracula. Gary Oldman has the, the best Dracula. Dracula. The Gary Oldman has the best Dracula laugh. Bella Lugosi doesn't laugh a lot, but Gary Oldman laughing as he played Dracula is pretty effective. Yeah, I want to do that. Tim Curry, especially in Legend, mm-hmm. he has that great guttural laugh. I wanted to say Doctor Evil because I just like that scene. But one more hashtag feminism moment. How can you all have left off? And I thought, Joe, you would jump at it. Maleficent. Yeah, Maleficent she has, has a great some laugh. of the great maniacal laugh. You could also say the Wicked Witch from Oz has a great one that's that's m- maniacal. But one I have to mention that I knew neither of y'all wouldn't. It almost was and one of my mates. And mother too, from the Snow White and the Seven Dwarves. Yeah, that's true. When she turns into Cinderella, the actually, Lady Tremaine has a uh, has a pretty good one. Yeah. Man, Disney had a lot. Disney had a lot um, of maniacal laughs. Sorry. And I should have mentioned when I did Vincent Price, his laugh as as of course Radigan, but. I've got to mention this one because it's one of my favorite scenes in a movie where the villain has the upper hand. Nothing, literally nothing can happen to him. And he is having a ball torturing the person in the passenger seat. Clancy Brown playing Kurgan in Highlander. It doesn't matter if you like the whole film. Go back and watch the scene where he picks up the prostitute and he's driving knowing he's immortal. Nothing's going to happen to him. And he is just laughing, having a good time as he runs over strollers and hits other cars because nothing's going to happen to him. He's laughing, having a good time. The woman is, Living of course, in, in sheer, utter panic. And Kurgan ha- and he also has that great laugh in the church. Hello, sisters. Uh, um, well, because they, of course, can't fight on holy ground. And he's mocking religion. He's mocking everything else and laughing and making everybody else uncomfortable because nothing's going to happen. He's immortal. Matter of fact, he's the big bad immortal. It's one of the issues with Highlander, other than the fact that you ended the movie with Connor becoming God, uh, godlike. And but on top of that... It's hard to go for sequels after that. But they on did. Top, on top of that, though... And I appreciate the sequels to for what they are. You, they never have had a villain. And no offense meant, Chad, I know you love Mario Van Peebles. Well, I don't mean doesn't. to call you out. But nobody touches Clancy Brown as Kurgan. Nope. His laugh, his menace. I mean, there's scenes in that film that are just uncomfortable because you're like, this guy would kill people. He would have no, he doesn't care. I swear, and I his need laugh to go watch, is great. watch Highlander. I haven't seen Again, dude, in 20 years. Ignore I, I everything about, else about it. Follow Kurgan. Clancy. A book randomly just fell across the room. I'm haunted. I've invoked the Kurgan. But no, uh, Kurgan as a character and Clancy Brown's laugh when he's doing Kurgan, where he makes it that much deeper and grittier, is perfect. So check out <laughs> Mr. Kravis Kurgan. I'm so sorry. I keep yawning. Mine is Emperor Palpatine from Star Wars. Once again, yeah. talking about stealing the laugh for uh, and giving away 
for yes a convoluted movie a convoluted trilogy giving away this the what what they should have kept as i don't understand why they gave that spoiler up in the trial it was a cool thing but why give it up wouldn't you have been much more i don't know surprised to go it was like oh shit they brought back palpatine i don't know why you give it up in the trailer it makes no sense actually i don't think they should have brought him back but he has Remember a cool ass laugh. yeah it's member berries and the well, other one go ahead I was going to say, the other thing, too, is they could have done it so many different ways. Like, in the, I know it no longer exists, but the expanded universe, the old school, in the comic books, they brought him up because they used the clone technology that they used to create all the clone soldiers. Mm -hmm. And they cloned Palpatine to see if he would have the powers. And he was young and and spry (laughs) and all that stuff. And he was a great villain. I find it fascinating they brought Thrawn back from that universe, but they've left everything else in the dust, so to speak. But... My other one is, and as much as I love Tim Curry as Pennywise the Clown, it, I, um, shoot, I didn't pull, I pulled up everything except, um, damn it, what's his name? Skarsgård. Skarsgård as Pennywise's laugh is fantastic. Mm-hmm. He is a fantastic Pennywise. And the only unfortunate thing about any of that was that the sequel was just so god awful. Yeah, it was dreadful. It's, I it's, still don't see how they dropped that. that, that you, you want to keep talking about convoluted fucking ending of it part two the whole third act is awful and convoluted and overly complicated for no apparent reason mm-hmm. and yeah, a that, lot I mean, of people a lot of people and it didn't even occur to me when i was watching it, other than i thought this was slightly disrespectful to people who have experienced suicide and i'm not trying to get on a soapbox about that but a lot of people who have either know people who have who've lost people to suicidal suicide or who know people who have suicidal adulation or people who have just a severe depression felt like the way they handled the suicide that we all know what happens in that book was just dreadful, especially with a letter at the end of why he had to do it. And all. it's just awful. It's just awful. Mm-hmm. Terrible movie. Sorry. And that being said, Skarsgård as it as a t- tremendous laugh. Oh, and, and, and by the way, it's just extremely talented period. Oh, yeah. The I whole mean, family. Yeah. It's unfair. Why didn't I my know. family eat any time? That older brother of his is in the Northman. I didn't even know it was him for 20 minutes. <laughs> really? No. <laughs> he's all jacked up with a beard on. I don't yeah, know. true. I don't he's all jacked he... up on Mountain Dew. He's all jacked up on Mountain Dew coming at that lady like a spider monkey. And steroids. <laughs> yeah, maybe. I don't know. But I didn't know um, him. So my honorable mentions, I got five, and I'll just, I'll just list them real quick. Uh, Robot Devil. Oh, that's good. That's good. From Futurama. Tell the Robot <laughs> Devil I heard him. <laughs> I just love it when he's in. The- I just love Go Robot ahead. Devil and the quotes. <laughs> I just love when he gets hit in the head. When he's laughing maniacally and the thing hits him on the head and he goes, <laughs> that real high pitched female voice, uh, sounding voice. But Robot Devil from Futurama, Dr. Giggles. Uh, yeah, by the way, it was free, and I started to watch the first like twenty minutes of it. I didn't. Like we did the it. other day. Yeah, yeah, and, and my entire thing about that is, man, Larry Drake should have got more roles. He should have. In Doctor like, Giggles, it wasn't it, that Doctor Giggles was good, but that he not. played <laughs> that care. He played those types of roles. Yeah, Dark Man being another indicator. Like he could have been. I won't say a Vincent Price type character but he he could have at least been a peter laurie character yeah agreed yeah ozzy osborne guys yeah yeah <laughs> crazy the beginning of crazy train um then uh my final two uh martha wentworth who played madam mim and sword in the stone i love madam yeah. mim's laugh guys yeah hashtag feminist <clears throat> but yes no that is a great laugh and the fact that she laughs at everything bleak right she yeah. doesn't laugh at things that are funny she laughs at suffering of others i'm going to have to destroy you dear <laughs> and then finally to end on the best note ever one of the best maniacal laughs of all time june foray as witch hazel yeah <laughs> yeah there's no i i can't even debate because the best part about that is it's a funny laugh but coming from witch hazel you know something bad's following and she and then she laughs and zooms away and she leaves her little uh uh, uh hair clips away hair little yeah. pin uh pins 
Yeah. Kind of flying in the air. Man, mm-hmm. I miss June Frey. That's somebody I wish I could have met because yeah. she lived forever. And, I, and I'm glad she lived forever. But... And Witch Hazel was eventually adopted both by, by Trace Mc, McNeil. Is that who does it now? Um, who also did a pretty good job. With, yes. Who did a pretty good job with the laugh, but still, it's not as good as June Frey's. Man, June Frey did everybody, though. I mean, she, yeah. from Rocky to. That yeah, team. now that's somebody I would like to be interviewed. I don't know, honestly. Yeah, yeah I, that's that. There are some stories. Yeah, yeah, just because she worked for everybody. If you were doing animation and you needed a woman's voice, or was she acting for seventy years, sixty, yeah. seventy years? Yeah, yeah. yeah. That, but I'm not Hannah Barbera. I'm not exaggerating, correct? No, she did Granny no. for Warner Brothers. Hannah Barbera, Warner Brothers. Man, uh, the only person that we have that's similar now, we have several people that do a lot of animation, I shouldn't say, but but maybe Tara Strong, if she stays active, may hit that same her last because she's done every- her last roles were in well, twenty fourteen she did Rocky again, yeah. uh, but in twenty thirteen was her last active year, and then in twenty she died in twenty seventeen, so yeah. four years of not working before she passed away. Was she was she ninety something? Um, doesn't matter. I, I think I, I she thought it matter. Close. I thought she was I mean, in her nineties. I think she worked either sixty or seventy years or something ridiculous. Active almost seventy years. Anyway, yeah. my last pick is Michael Myers. Nineteen seventeen. Sorry, nineteen seventeen to twenty seventeen. You do the math. That sounds like a hundred years. Yeah, cross to there it. Ninety nine or a hundred. Yeah. Oh, you know. Go ahead. You said Mike Myers. Michael, Michael Myers. Myers. I was joking. Uh, it wasn't you fun. actually brought up one that uh, for a villain a while back that I just realized he has a laugh that is maniacal in its own way. Uh, Raiders of the Lost Ark. Yeah, because he laughs when they open the thing and he realizes it's all been for naught and it's all stupid. Uh, taught. Yeah. Uh, I can't remember the yeah. I, I, that character's actor's name either. He's basically basically being uh, playing. Um, she, 99, Joe. She was 99. Couldn't make it to 100? Mm-mm. What a bag of shit. <laughs> but no, no, you're absolutely right. I think that, Because I think he has a very distinctive laugh. And the fact that he uses against allies and enemies alike is, God, he's a, what a jerk. What a jerk. But a great character. What a great character. I agree. All right, guys. This has been Bonehead Weekly Fun oh, Size. Please send all your hate mail to James not, Thomas. Not I mean, Bonehead size. Weekly. This, this is, is a fun size. size. I am so tired. This, Keep going. But. Yes. But real, real quick, we should bring up one other person who has a great maniacal laugh. We One more person that has a great maniacal laugh in that he says maniacal laugh. How could we not bring up the Muppets? Chris and Cooper. what's his name? Yeah. Uh, d- uh, Deadly? Thank you, Chris Cooper and the Muppets. Maniacal laugh. Maniacal laugh. Maniacal. No, no, maniacal laugh. The, the Chris oh, I Cooper get it. and I know. the Muppets. Puppet movie. He, yeah. he can't laugh, so he just says maniacal, maniacal laugh. laugh. Mm-hmm. He has a great maniacal laugh, and that he says maniacal laugh. Okay, I've made this too long. Good night, everybody. Good night. <laughs> Where's the damn button? All right. Grrrr. <sighs>